in gram negative coverage. Okay. Uh, gram negative. The bank was gram positive. Okay. Um, remember, it is um, um, very nephrotoxic. You have to monitor peaks and troughs. Um, you have to monitor levels. Okay. Not necessarily uh, the peak, but the trough levels. You definitely need to know um, how uh, much is in the system. Uh, it is uh, bactericidal, so it's time dependent. Okay. Throughout lowest point um, for drug concentration, 10 to 20 um, milligrams per deciliter. Um, and you want to take the throth um, half hour prior to dosing. Okay. Aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides are your gentamicin. Um, aminoglycosides can cover a lot, okay? However, they're very nephrotoxic. Um, and because of their nephrotoxicity, they are not as well um, tolerated. They're also very ototoxic and can cause uh, a lot of tinnitus in patients, okay? These are your aminoglycosides, streptomycin, neomycin. Streptomycin, you use it a lot for TB, um, as a TB coverage. Gentamicin, tobramycin, you also use it. Amikacin, um, debecacin, um, um, those are the only ones I know of. You use them to cover mycobacteria, which is basically for your TB patients. Um, TB, your antimicrobacterials, um, isonacid, rifampin, ethambutol, uh, streptomycin, ciprofloxacin for drug resistance. Uh, usually you're putting these patients on these drugs for about six months. There's a, a regimen, you can take them off um, three, you can put them, start them on three, take them off one, um, I think two months in, but you have to see how they're working. Remember, isonacid is extreme, all of these drugs are extremely toxic. Ethambuzol is very nephrotoxic, so you want to take that off first. Um, Rifampin um, can also cause liver disease. Isonacid um, can actually, um, cause seizures. Um, there are studies that show that isonacid actually depletes the bo um, body of GABA, so it actually causes the seizure threshold to be lowered significantly. Isonacid overdose, oh, it actually lowers the body of B6, which actually is needed to synthesize GABA, okay? Um, so you have very low um, levels of GABA because of isonacid. Um, someone comes in and they're seizing and, well, before I say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, boy. Carol. Yeah. Read the question, man. Huh? Jim is a 35-year-old male diagnosed with HIV who presents to the ED with seizures. Patient has no one with him. He is treated in the ED with GABA inducers, Dilantin, Keppra, and Depakote with no resolution of seizure activity. What is the most likely cause for those seizures? <laughs> he probably had TB. He's been treated with INH. Yeah. He's depleted B6, depleted his GABA, and of course, he's having refractory seizures. How do we treat him? Give him B6. It's that simple. Paroxetine. So, so true. It's the easiest thing. Okay. So giving him the GABA inducers wouldn't help. I'm sorry? The GABA inducers weren't helping though. No, because the B6 Because he doesn't have GABA. Because he already needs B6 and B6 is needed to synthesize GABA. So if you don't have B6, you can't synthesize GABA and you can't synthesize GABA. You can give GABA inducers all you want. It's not going to work until you replace the GABA. Usually how they dose it is that they're going to give you the same amount of GABA, uh, of B6 as GABA that you took. Or pro, um, pyroxidine um, as, as you took INH. Uh, yeah. 
Would we just automatically oh, think he had TB oh, and that he was taking that medication? Or well, we would you have would to automatically get a good think that he probably has TB if he's HIV positive. Okay. Um, that's a very high possibility. And for the mere fact that you've, you've given him GABA inducers, which means you've probably given him dilantin and, uh, I'm sorry, Vancouver. Vigan. You've given um, lorazepam diazepam. and diazepam. Um, and midazolam, any one of those. Remember midazolam too. Mm -hmm. I throw those at you. I throw it sneaking. I say GABA inducer, and I don't give you midazolam. I don't give you the name. Um, the name. Um, no, I don't give you the um, diazepam, and I don't give you lorazepam, and I give you midazolam. And nobody knows that midazolam is freaking GABA inducer. I'm like, really? Yeah. GABA inducer. All of them, okay. So, any of those I've given you've given all of those, you've given dilantin, you've given capra, you've given depakote, and nothing works, and nothing is working. Go back to the board. So, in this case, he probably has TB. You don't know what meds he was on. Your chance of giving him um, paroxetine and seeing if he works, it works before putting him in a pentagonal coma is much much easier because at this point it possibly has it's only B6 okay and you actually um, can use it to treat um, peripheral neuropathy that's associated with INH and INH can get have a lot of peripheral um, neuropathy okay especially in young patients who are taking INH just because of um, exposure because remember, you give them six months of uh, prophylactic therapy with INH and with um, ethambutol and rifampin. So if you're giving them that, uh, a lot of times they get a peripheral neuropathy. They start feeling numbness and tingling in their hands and feet from the INH. And what you have to give them is supplemental B12. B6, B6. Peroxidine. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, nucleoside analogs is your antiviral. The only antiviral, um, um, well, there are more. Acyclovir, valcyclovir, famcyclovir, gamicyclovir. Um, we can use Epstein Barr virus, um, CMV, you use acyclovir. You can use Vance, um, valacyclovir. Um, also for um, herpes, um, family cycle there, HSV1, HSV2, uh, varicella, uh, Epstein Barr virus, hepatitis B virus, uh, gang cycle there, also CMB, cyclomegalovirus. Okay. Um, Acyclovir, uh, given orally, valcyclovir, thrombocytopenia purpura, you want to walk off of this, hemolytic anemia or uremia. Headache um, with pancyclovir, gancyclovir, you have um, granulocytopenia, so you want to monitor um, CBC, um, and they may be carcinogenic, so you want to watch for any kind of, if they're high risk for developing cancer, you want to keep it away from them. Um, herpes, zoster outbreak, varicella outbreak, Bell's palsy is usually a sequela of herpes, um, zoster, so you can actually treat them with the um, acyclovir, valcyclovir, um, and so forth. What's Bell's palsy, by the way? It's like the numbness of nerve. Oh, what is it? Facial. Cranial nerve. Cranial, which one? Which nerve? Seven. Somebody said nine. No, no. Five? Is it five or seven? Seven. 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 Facial. Facial. I said facial. Thank you. I, said I just didn't say the number. Lower part of the face yeah. is the brain. The whole face is peripheral. Peripheral, Bell's palsy. I'm putting that on the test, I swear to God. <laughs> so, peripheral, Bell's palsy. Peripheral, racial nerve seven palsy is Bell's palsy. The whole face is gone. 
Premium nerve three. That's what I was going to say. Pitos. The eyes closed and they can't open. Which, which cranial nerve opened the eye? Pocket or measure. Three. 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 And if you can't open the eye, you have. And if he says it one more time, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> and if you can't close the eye, you have a cranial nerve what? Seven. seven. Oh. Cranial nerve seven closes the eye. Three opens. You get a ptosis. Seven closes. You can't close the eye because remember the lower face is what usually droops in a um, in a stroke. If you can't close the eyes, the whole face that's paralyzed is a cranial nerve seven, and it's usually a peripheral, and that's usually like a bell screw. I'm actually going to make sure to remember to put that on the top. That's on the test? I'll tell you how many people get it wrong. <laughs> Nephrotoxic, BUN and creatinine. Um, you want to monitor? Make sure you hydrate the patient. Who is looking for the um, ophthalmic fair? Time to flu. <laughs> Clara. Clara wanted a time to flu. No, he said that. No, he said that. You said that in the back. I was joking. I thought it was Clara. So he said he wanted to get him some time to flu. <laughs> oh, felt him in there. Um, is usually you're going to give it for influenza. Um, you have to give it within the first. 24 to 48 hours of the um, virus onset. Anything past that is just giving drugs for no reason. Okay. You do that. People take it. Zanimivir is inhaled. Um, Paramivir is administered IV. Okay? It's a deal, right? Which one? Ostelmivir is the, the pill. Symptomatic less than 48 hours, most um, you have to be initiating that. Children under um, two, you can give it up to two weeks. You can give tamiflu up to two weeks? Up to two weeks if they have the symptoms. Wait, two weeks? I know. I think it's given. Well, that's two week duration. No, not two week duration. Two week old? No. Yeah. Two that's weeks horrible old. though. If they're like that young, you give them as much as they've had the symptoms. They can give it up as much as two weeks old. This is really a spot. No. Not a two year old? Two weeks. Let them write it out. Let them write it out. Watch it. Watch it wait. Well, even for adults, I don't think I would ever want the tiny flu on this. But I've never had the flu, so I don't know how horrible I would be. Yeah, so I probably would have taken it as much as I did. I want to like. She didn't take the tiny flu when she was sick for a month. And she took the tiny flu when she was sick for a week. I was the only person in her that didn't get home back from anybody. They say they gave it to like the. Uh, yeah, just show the yeah. duration of the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, systemic azoles and antifungals. If you have a fungal infection, you give them azole. You give them a azole. Okay? Um, Amphotericin B is one that you really don't like. No. If you're given amphotericin B, um, you're that's not doing very well at all. But that's the, is that the bad one when the patient also shakes and has rigor and all that? Like they could. Side effects? It has a lot of side effects. But if you're on amphotericin B, you need it. Don't they call it something else? They call it um, amphotericin B or something like that. 
They call it amphoterical or something like that. Okay. Azole, ketonazole, um, minoconazole, teraconazole, teoconazole, buconazole, all those canazoles, these are for yeast. Okay. Candida. These are fungal type of um, infection. Rear solvent um, is also for fungal type of infection. Um, it's for tina capita. Okay. All are hepatotoxic, so you have to monitor. Okay. You want to give it for a very short period of time. Fluconazole requires a loading dose, so you should give it um, a high dose up front. Pinoconazole, you want to monitor AST, ALT, alkaline phos, bilirubin before and every three um, to four months. Hopefully no one's on it for that long, but if you're um, immunocompromised uh, with cancer and stuff like that, sometimes they are. And thelaminics, um, these are for intestinal, um, they call them like worms. Parasites. Parasites. <laughs> Pingworms, most common. Um, ADRs, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, transient abdominal pain um, are associated with them. Um, Invermectin um, can cause uh, Maser Maserati. <laughs> Maserati. <laughs> 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 And I don't know what that is. I haven't looked at it. <laughs> There's my Katarina. What's the Mazzotti reaction? <laughs> Not the Maserati reaction. <laughs> the Mazzotti. You want that reaction? Yes. I want that Maserati reaction. <laughs> <laughs> give me a Maserati. Actually, give me a Tesla reaction. Very good. Nice threatening character anyway. Fever, radicaria, swollen, tender lymph nodes, tachycardia, hypotension, arthralgia, edema, abdominal pain. Sounds like Within seven days of treatment. Sounds like a lot of uh, uh, uh. Um, We don't really give these drugs that much anymore. Um, we don't really see ping worms. Um, but if you see someone who comes from like a third world country, you, will, um, you can definitely see them. Round worms, wick worms, uh, <coughs> worms, thread worms, scabies. <coughs> we see scabies. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Sometimes, yeah. Going for the rest of all yeah. Don't come to my neurosurgical floors, please. You have scabies. But those are the drugs that you would use for necrotizing fasciitis as well? No. Necrotizing fasciitis? Necros Necrotizing fasciitis is a surgical emergency. Okay. What you're using to treat these is surgery. You're going to actually treat them, uh, guys, guys, you're going to actually treat them with gram negative, gram positive coverage, but you want to, um, those patients need surgery. Um, resection of wherever that is is what the treatment of um, is. If I had a few people from Mexico. Uh, I had a patient today with that. Just really? down so to the tendons. She tendon. had two abscesses mm -hmm. on her thigh that when she went in, she, they tunneled to each other. So oh, wow. she had to open it up and it reached all the way to the fascia. And if you hadn't like started pressing, it would have breached the muscle. Oh. So she like took all this. It was like two little holes that like. My first experience with necrotizing fasciitis when I was an ICU nurse it was a young guy. Um, it started with his feet. He ended up losing his balls and everything. Wow. Oh my God. That's, that's when you just say, Doc, just kill me. Kill me too. He's like, Doc, if you got to take the balls, just don't let me out of it. Just, just don't let me out. <laughs> So, Don't look at the other door. That's his philosophy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Shoot me over my head. I'm, I'm good, I'm they good, Doc. They had to, do, they had to take all that radical, dissect, radical, radical dissection of his genitals, his anus, everything. Oh, he was just sitting there on like a little piece of anus, like just this little piece oh. here. We had to put him on like a, like on a, uh, um, like a pillow, a special wow. pillow. We had to take, they took everything from down below. He ended up with nothing. He ended up dying, 
but he because he was so young, I think he was like in his early 30s, oh, they were God. very aggressive trying to respect him. Wow. And every time they tried, he just ended up with something else. It was just horrible. That was my first interaction with it. I was like, That's the saddest thing. Do you know how he got it? Um, I'm not. Re- I don't remember. Probably dove um, in a dove in a lake or a river. I don't know what he did. Lake. I don't remember. That's what I was getting. Um, but he he was only like in his early thirties. Don't don't swim in rivers. Was young married, everything. Very young guy, and everything was gone. And he ended up well. If honestly, if he didn't end up dying from the infection, he would have ended up dying from the infection. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. One day you don't even have a ball. Don't joke. <laughs> 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 what did he say? What did he say? <laughs> No. Miguel said money jewels, Wednesday no jewels. Metronidazole with the metronidazole. Um, metronidazole is used for anaerobic bacteria. So anaerobes. Where do you see anaerobes a lot? Gut. Gut. So definitely and diverticulitis, all gut flora um, is very anaerobic. So you want to make sure that if you have a GI infection, you have metronidazole, not meconazole. Okay. Yeah, you can use it for C. diff and colitis. Okay. Even though the use for C. diff is, fair, it's, it's falling out of favor, um, more now, so now, you use um, vancomycin oral. Yes. But there's a there's a there's a, a drop now, a very new one for CD. Very new. One. So yeah. Okay. That one I don't know of yet. I haven't no, I used it. Yet. I, I, I knew it, but I don't know. That's okay. <laughs> Probably cost a whole bunch this one. So if you want to cover anaerobes, you want to cover parasites and bacteria. Go metronidazole. So. Monitor, monitor for leukopenia because it actually can cause uh, significant leukopenia. Um, 
avoid drinking. It can actually give you this uh, dulcifragram <coughs> like reaction. It's a really um, drunken like reaction. And, and you'll throw up. They vomit. And you'll throw they up. Just, they, they feel horrible. Yeah. Um, you guys can read this. Yes, yes, yes. That's your sister. If you want someone not to drink rum, give them metronidazole um, <laughs> and alcohol. I'm serious. Just like put, crush some metronidazole in it. If you have a partner and you want them to stop drinking. Crush some metronidazole. Every time they do it, you swallow. What, like with your no, teenager? Like, you like with your teenager? Drink. With your teenager? No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. If you have a partner. I don't partner, know what you're talking about. <laughs> no. <laughs> but if you have a partner who, like, takes a whiskey oh. every night and they're drinking too much, oh. you start preparing their whiskey for them. <laughs> you crush them because of metronidazole. That's a good one. And put it in there. They vomit their guts out. They start thinking that, you know. That they can't they handle drinking they can't anymore. Handle drink anymore. <laughs> they go out. I, I can't take it like I used to anymore. <laughs> and then, you know, eventually they'll slow down and stop drinking. Like, you just volunteer to make their drink every time. And then if they start getting suspicious, you just put it in the bottle. Oh, when they leave the it. Bottle <laughs> <laughs> Man, you gotta know how to do that. It's a good one. It's a real good one. You ready to get on this one? Well, the woman has to know what to do. Okay. A patient with degenerative joint disease is undergoing insertion of a hip prosthesis. In order to avoid complications due to prosthetic infection, the surgeon will pre-treat the patient with an antibiotic. The hospital has a significant problem with methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. Which of the following antibiotics should their surgeon select? Mm -hmm. They have a significant burst of problems. But if it weren't MRSA, then it was not okay. We can get the simple solution. Okay. That's why I put the, the, the um, MRSA risk there. And Mako is grand possible. Back to those one possible. Urinary tract infections, we talked about those, okay? How do we treat them? Um, um, what you call it? TMP, SMZ, um, which is your triasulfurin, whatever. I can't say that this time of the day. Triantrin. Triantrin. <laughs> Triantrin. Yes. Can I go back just a second? I'm sorry to stop you, but with the banco, do we have to... I remember I went back on slide 83. It said that we have to use it for ground cause of infections like MRSA, right? It's the first slide. Mm -hmm. But I also made a note something about it must also be administered with some antibiotic that has gram negative oh, purpose. Yes. Should we have two there? It's if it's empiric. If it's empiric. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. I want to make sure. But if, if we're not know. using empiric, we're using it for prophylaxis, okay. for surgical prophylaxis. But so we have. It's because it's just skin. Is Sur broad. Surgical is just skin. Empiric means that you have to cover for any. It's broad. Is that broad? Is empiric broad? That'll be used. Broad. Yes. I don't. I don't know if I can pronounce this. I just sent a text to my ID doctor he's around with and asked her what the other C. diff medicine was. Because mm. neither one of my docs would like the flagell or the or banco. It's difficult. It just fit fit up. Uh, F I D A X O M I C I N. I haven't seen it. Five yet. days. Five days. Okay. The good thing about my floor is that we have so much surgical patients with brain and spine. When patients don't belong there and they have C diff, we go med search. It's gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, like we're doing rounds in the morning, and the neurologist goes C diff. <laughs> Transfer. <laughs> Get out of here. 
All right, guys. So E. coli, number one cause. Um, cranberry juice, remember we said bacteriostatic type of activity, okay? Um, urinary analgesic is not to cure the urinary tract infection. Um, it is a phenyl, is a pyridin, um, or pyrid, um, pyridin. Um, it's basically for the pain. It's an analgesic that they use um, to treat the patient. You want to yes. eradicate the positive mechanism. Peridium. Peridium. Turn the urine orange. P orange, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> Gram-negative coverage is very important with urinary tract infections um, because it's usually gram-negative bacteria that we have. E. coli is gram-negative. Uh, Proteus is also gram-negative. Okay? Proteus in men, E. coli in women. Um, I don't pretty much care about this first line versus second line. Um, you just need to know that you can choose whichever line works well for the patient. If a simple urinary tract infection Nifiritoin, um, if you're going to treat them, if it's a sexually active female with an uncomplicated urinary tract infection, you're gonna treat them with a fluoroquinolone or you can treat them with a, um, a sulfur drug um, such as nifiritoin, um, you can treat them with Bactrin, um, or you can actually, and you can do it for three to five days. If you have a pyelonephritis, where you have cast in the urine, uh, that means it's much higher up and you have to treat them for an extended period of time, usually um, seven to 14 days, depending. Okay. Amoxicillin is not recommended for empiric therapy. Uh, however, amoxicillin is a drug of choice for a pregnant woman with a UTI. Older adults can have old, um, asymptomatic UTI, um, treats based on the culture and sensitivity, not um, based on the urinalysis. Um, males with enlarged prostate can actually retain urine, so you wanna look at those. Um, pregnancy, asymptomatic, asymptomatic bacteria, um, you wanna watch out for that. Routine screening during pregnancy, um, you wanna give, um, whatchamacallit, um, amoxicillin is a drug of choice. Um, Doxycycline, STIs, positive dipstick for leukocyte restorase, or hemoglobin, and um, negative gram stains are likely to have UTI complicated by chlamydia or trochomonas. Um, so if the person has um, chlamydia, you definitely um, can treat them with doxycycline, okay? Seven days of therapy. 